I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, this is not Shackleton. This is Sally. And uh, I don't know. Maybe Sally keeps stealing Shackleton's food because uh, she seems to be gaining more and more weight while he seems to be getting a bit thinner. But he's doing better lately, so um, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Just have to maybe... He's very active and just have to up his food. So I'm continuing my discussions on the jet streams. Um, I'm ta going to talk about a peer-reviewed paper that is specifically on blocking. Different. It basically talks about all of the different types of blocks, how they're categorized, and how um, how they can expect it to be change, changed as uh, climate change proceeds. So, so let's have a look um, at the paper here. But first of all, I'm going to come back to this diagram here, but these are some of the main types of blocks over, this is over North America here. So North Atlantic rather, this is the Atlantic, this is Europe, North America is over here. So this is a, an example um, of a summer ridge. So this is the most basic type of block. You get the jet streams coming like this, very wavy. And you get a dip here, a trough here, and you get a strong ridge here. And under the ridge, it's hot and dry. And in these regions, it's low pressure. And uh, you get weather, you get rain, etc., overcast skies. Okay, so this is a typical summer ridge, the basic block. When the ridge gets more extended, gets more poleward, and the troughs get further south, and perhaps even get larger area, elongate, and you get some closed off cells here. So this is the basic ridge here. These are the troughs on either side. This looks like the capital omega symbol. So this is called an omega block. Now, what can happen is you can, if you adjust an omega block um, with um, an anti anticyclonic, um, in the anticyclonic um, uh, situation where the pressure is even higher here um, and so air tries to leave the high pressure area for the low pressure area so it moves out from the center here and this whole thing tilts so you get more rotation in this direction so the whole thing tilts so this trough becomes less pronounced and weaker and this trough starts bending over and this is why it's called the wave breaking. So it starts bending right over. So we have an elongated situation here. So this is anticyclonic wave breaking. This is a block. These blocks are all, all have some level of persistence. They stick around. They can form over a few days and they can stick around for several weeks before they dissipate. This is uh, cyclonic wave breaking. So now instead of being tilted more this way, it's tilted this way. So this trough here is enhanced. Think of a rotation this way. This guy here shrinks and you get this, um, the ridge comes up here and curves over. So this is also wave breaking. And then the situation here um, is called a Rex or dipole block. So you have the ridge here. So it's like this pattern, but you get a low pressure area developing underneath. Okay, so the flow um, and, and again, these are all sort of quasi-stationary stable situations, and this is how they're defined, and there's lots of different indices defined. So I should say in all of these plots, the, um, the contour lines are the geopotential heights or pressures at 500 hexapascal. The spacing, con the spacing is 60 meters in separation um, in, in uh, like uh, altitude for the for the pressures and the different colors the shading is the potential temperature um, okay so the these areas being colder connected to the pole these areas being warmer um, in the red okay so this is a key plot showing all of the different types of blocks and it's in this paper on blocking and its response to climate change um, and uh, it's the paper i'm going to discuss in detail um, I just want to point out that the 
uh, the blog, uh, the, the previous video, the start of this series on, on the jet streams, changes in the jet streams, driving abrupt climate change, and abrupt climate change then affects the jet stream, so they respond, and then you get a sort of uh, feedback situation occurring. You know, it's a chicken and the egg sort of thing. Which one changes first? So this is the blog, uh, my blog at paulbeckwith.net. Please consider donating to support this work. And this is the first video there posted. Um, and, uh, you know, the jet streams are crucial. They're vital for our weather and climate systems. When you get a large quasi-stationary ridge forming or a block, we get extreme weather events. So it's very important to see how these how the jet stream is going to behave moving forward under abrupt climate change. So I look into the latest uh, peer-reviewed science. I don't have this book yet. This is by Tim Willings. It's about a year old on the jet stream. I'll have to order it. Okay, um, discovering new things in your hometown. This, I, I crossed a bridge the other day with some friends and I'd never crossed that bridge before. I've never seen these, these big mirror balls so it's for the first time, you can discover new things in your hometown for the first time, even though you've lived there 20, should say 20 years. Um, so that's, that's interesting. So check out my blog if you haven't. And of course, I've sent it out on Facebook and Twitter. And you know, one of the ways you can help me the most is to, is to share, these, um, share these things, these, my videos, my, my tweets and Facebook, uh, post to other people to try to get more and more people to uh, understand what's happening with abrupt climate change by following following my uh, stuff. Okay, so again, this is a paper I'm going to talk about. Um, so blocking and its response to climate change. So atmospheric blocking events are some of the most high impact weather patterns in the mid latitudes. Yet they have often been a cause for concern in future climate projections and in climate models because there's low confidence in the models, how they deal with blocking. Um, the models tend to agree with each other and say that blocking will decline in the future, but they don't really have, there's, we don't really have a lack of, uh, we don't have a comprehensive theory of blocking. So, um, and the models, they consistently underestimate the blocking that occurs and they underestimate the duration of the blocking. So we can't really expect them to be too accurate in their projections of the future if they can't get a grasp on the reality, you know, or simulate the reality of what's happening presently in blocking. So reliable simulation remains elusive, at least beyond a few days lead time. Right, but the models do give us and let us to have have a deeper understanding of the processes. But we need even an even deeper understanding, a better understanding of the processes, <clears throat> because you know we need to try to figure out more on the onset. The you know what what triggers a blocking event? What once a blocking occurs, what maintains it? What makes it quasi stationary? How can it sit there for a week or two weeks? Why doesn't it decay? Eventually it decays, but why doesn't it decay sooner? You know, why is it so persistent? We don't know these things. So we need to understand the atmospheric dynamics of the processes. One of the things that's probably important is diab diabetic processes. This is processes that bring more energy into the block. So, you know, warm convective um, trains of air going up into the ridge, bringing moisture, which then condenses, releases latent heat, could add heat, and that can help maintain the blocking process. But that's a fairly new thing that's being looked at. So the term blocking, it covers a whole different array of patterns, synoptic. This is weather map scale patterns. And thus, there's a bewildering range of indices to try to identify e events, OK? And the models underestimate the blocking and uh, the duration and the onset of the blocking. They don't deal with that very well. There's complex regional and seasonal variations in blocking. So all of these things are, are looked at. So basically blocking is a class of weather systems in the middle to high latitudes. You know, meteorologists say what a cyclone is. They all agree. 
say what a block is. They, they actually, there's disagreement over what should be considered a block. Basically, common features are persistence. It lasts for, you know, many days, up to two weeks. It's quasi-stationarity, stationarity, okay? So it sits in one spot, doesn't move relative to the ground, and obstructs. It obstructs the flow of air, the westerly flow and the storm tracks. Blocks often exhibit a large anti, so it's large anticyclonic anomaly, high pressure area. Often the zonal flow is reversed. So you get net easterly winds in some parts of the block, especially in the wave breaking type uh, blocks. Um, and by disrupting the westerly flow for a week or longer, we, off, we get these extreme weather events occurring. Okay, so I talked about the uh, different types of blocks here. So the most, the simplest, most common block is a stationary ridge in a large amplitude Rosby wave. Okay, there's low potential vorticity or rotation. Air is advected from the subtropics up into the ridge um, and it's stationary. Stationarity is achieved if the Rosby wave has a near zero phase speed. We can talk about the a wave speed and a phase speed, which is the speed of the wave packet, the speed of the whole configuration. And when the block just sits there stuck, it's got basically zero phase speed. Omega block is uh, there's more poleward uh, amplitude and there's some closed contours in the geostrophic stream function. These closed contours. Um, and then there's also the Rosby wave breaking. The extended ridge is folded either in either a cyclonic or an anticyclonic strength uh, sense. And uh, then there's also the so-called dipole type block or the Rex block. Okay, so there's various blocking patterns and they all have various impacts and, and mechanisms. But blocking is a sporadic and highly variable phenomena. There's large fluctuations from season to season, from decade to decade. Some of the variability may be forced from the tropics, okay? There's a big question is the effect of the poles on the block and the effect of the tropics. I've often talked about the effect of the warming Arctic, the temperature amplification, the Arctic temperature amplification, causing the jet streams to buckle and uh, then become stuck. But there's also a big forcing from the tropics, which needs to be discussed. And I'll talk about that in some of my future videos very soon. The mid-latitude sea surface temperatures have an impact and there can be local mid-latitude dynamics. There's also the orography or the terrain. Um, now blocking, uh, because blocking frequencies are poorly simulated by climate models, that both the, the occurrence of them, the frequency of occurrence of them, and the duration, and even numerical weather prediction models can't really predict them. Once they happen and you know the configuration is there, then you can do decent forecasts. But we lack a dynamical theory of blocking. Of course, most of the literature talks about northern hemisphere blocking, but it does also occur in the southern hemisphere. Although the jet streams move typically faster in the southern hemisphere, so the duration of the blocking events is a, uh, doesn't last as long. So this is the summer ridge pattern, which I, I discussed um, at the beginning of this video. The, so this is the simplest block. You know, a ridge here, two troughs here, cold here and cold here because we get cold Arctic air coming down, warm humid air here coming up, you know, and it's pretty symmetric. The omega block, this is higher up. There's these closed contours and, you know, more, uh, more developed. So, so a stronger ridge and stronger troughs, basically. And this is the sh omega shape, so it's called an omega block. If we get a, a rotation of this whole thing so that this guy gets longer, this guy gets shorter, this whole thing gets offset or rotated, this is the anticyclonic wave breaking situation and if the rotation is this way such that this trough gets bigger this one gets shorter we get a tilting this way this is a cyclonic wave breaking situation and then if we take this situation here and we have a low pressure area forming down here this is the so-called rex or dipole block okay so those are the key uh, blocking configurations and uh, thank you for listening and i'll continue in another uh, video. Thanks again. Bye for now.